welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name is Alan. I hope you're all well. Uh, this week I've been making something that I've been trying to do for about the past year. Uh, I saw it on uh, YouTube. Uh, some people created this uh, piece of terrain using a water gun or squirt gun or nerf gun or something. So I bought this off uh, eBay and I mean it's pretty big you could probably get a couple pieces of terrain out of this and um, the idea was that I could cut this down and very quickly and very cheaply turn this into a pretty effective piece of uh, industrial style terrain I think the main theme uh, that you want to keep to with uh, with buying like a water gun for this situation is using a lot of straight edges and finding a water gun with a lot of straight edges, some have very um, curved and flowing designs, and uh, or a lot of writing on them, uh, which is kind of like embossed. And I tried to steer away from those as much as possible because the writing is just something to cover up, and because uh, you don't want that on the finished piece. And any flowing designs are a little bit alien and I wanted mine to look a bit more human-like and human sent to build things with a lot of uh, straight lines and kind of angular protuberances so yeah I'm, I'm going to use this and I'm going to make probably a couple of pieces of terrain the idea is I think I will cut across this line here and use this section as a piece of terrain, probably cut the handle off and this stock, and then I'll use the the top end uh, as another piece of terrain. Probably take this off as well. Um, so yeah, let's let's get cutting this thing apart and then see what we can come up with. All right, so with the gun cut into three pieces, this is the first. This is the biggest piece, and let's just see what we're working with here. I've got a few. Uh, interesting details. I've got the water tank still on the inside that slides out. Pretty useful. Not sure whether to keep that in or have this as kind of a skeletal structure of something that used to be once used. A few holes in it, a few stacks on top. These could be useful for exhausts. Yeah, let's do a base for it then. So I'm using some Formex. This is expanded PVC. Uh, it can be quite expensive sometimes, but I mean, if you can just use like MDF or some uh, graphics medium weight chipboard or something, I'm just using this because it's really handy, it's uh, rigid, it's able to be carved quite easily and it cuts well, it's just really useful stuff to, to use for modelling. And of course you don't have to have a base on anything that you make, but on this situation I figured it would be best because it's quite a tall piece and I didn't want it to topple over whilst playing with it and I figured it would give me a chance to add a little bit more of deserty base around it if I wanted to uh, elaborate on the environment. So I just used a Stanley knife to bevel the edges, make a nice smooth transition between the game board and the terrain piece. If you were to use an MDF board for this sort of thing, you'd have to sand it down and that would just take a little bit longer. This is a much quicker, easier way to get the same effect. And should I want to light this up with a tea light, I've put a small hole in the base. This will go directly beneath the water tank of the water gun. Uh, I also am going to cover up some of these gaping holes with a piece of plastic card. You can use some green stuff from Milly Putty to fill in the small ones, but honestly I'm just going to do this very very quickly and I don't, I'm not even going to cover up the small holes. Uh, this project is meant to be super quick and super easy, so I'm just going to leave them as they are, but I am going to add a few pieces of hardware so that it looks a little bit less like a water gun. I added a few bits of tubes there on top as the exhaust stacks and a few bits of hardware on the side as piping and I should hopefully help sell the pieces a bit more of an industrial uh, bit of terrain 
So I undercoated the whole thing in a black spray primer and I took a big brush and some a cheap acrylic craft paint. This is a burnt sienna craft paint and I just covered the whole thing in this and this should give a nice base of rusty metal uh, hopefully help uh, really sell this kind of dilapidated uh, industrial ruin. And to avoid those brush strokes, simply use a sponge to dab out those areas and really blend it in and get rid of those lines that you don't want. That should give a much nicer texture. Now looking at the desert paints that I have at my disposal, this dark brown was basically out. It's just too dark. This desert yellow spray here I got from a local hobby shop is pretty much perfect for the colour that I want. Uh, but to do any touch-ups, I'd need to use maybe this one, but that's just too light, and that was a desert yellow from Vallejo. But then Zandri Dust from the Citadel range is a pretty good match with the desert yellow spray, so I think I'm going to use that for any touch-ups, and that's going to be my colour scheme for the bases. Now, I'm going to use a method for rusting metal that's... Um, that I'm, I'm quite fond of most of the time. I'm going to use some masking fluid and just going to sponge it on in various areas. I'm going to put this on the places that I want to remain definitely rusty uh, because some parts of this are going to get a bit of a paint job. Uh, after all, you know, not all industrial stuff is just bare metal. You know, a lot of it has a good paint job on it and things. Uh, so I'm going to apply some bits of this that will. Uh, definitely result in a little bit of uh, underneath rust coming through. So I used the sponge and just dabbed it on, as, on as much of it as I thought would remain rusty. And it's definitely worth mentioning that masking fluid is essentially just liquid latex. If you have a latex allergy, just do not use it at all. It's not worth it. And then once that was dry, you can just paint over all of that masking fluid. Uh, I'm going to choose some various panels from around this piece and just paint them up in a nice uh, red or a kind of creamy off-white ivory colour uh, as a paint job and, uh, and then you can just rub off the masking fluid. Uh, but as I said, you can just rub your finger over these areas and it removes the masking fluid that has dried and it reveals the rust underneath. It's a very satisfying process. But then... A disaster. And this wasn't even the worst of it. In fact, this is actually quite a small piece. Okay, so the um, I, I I really like masking fluid uh, for making rust effects uh, on various pieces. I think on this occasion the the plastic which comprises the um, the water gun is quite glossy. I thought a spray primer which is designed to really stick to surfaces very well. Uh, I thought that would stick to that surface enough that the masking fluid wouldn't just pull it off but I was wrong and you live and learn <laughs> so I'm gonna have to uh... <sighs> yeah. and as you can see huge chunks have come off the corners where the masking fluid had just stuck to that paint a little bit too well and pulled it off the, the plastic of the water gun so I had to persevere with a repair job, so I took some Rhinox Hide, a nice dark brown from the Citadel range, and I set about covering up all those areas where the paint had come off. There's quite a few of them, so this took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. 
but then eventually it was all done and I got some burnt sienna back on to give it that rusty undercoat using an old brush here just stippling it on and I used a sponge as well to really kind of spread out and blend that colour in then made that central green tank uh, a little bit darker using uh, a watered down darker green paint Then added some much more vibrant rusty bits using some riser rust and my old rusty brush. Uh, this brush is the only brush I use for doing rust. Uh, technical paints from Games Workshop tend to absolutely ruin a brush so this is the one that I use for all of my rust and uh, hopefully save any other paint brushes that might be sacrificed to it. I'm just using a kind of stippling technique where you stipple on the paint and then give it a few seconds to sort of like adhere to the surface and then spread it out and blend it out with the brush around the, uh, the edges of where you've been painting. And once the rust was done I went around the whole piece with a kind of gunmetal uh, just to really give the impression that some parts of this uh, industrial terrain here had, had really kind of weathered through and some fresh new metal had been exposed uh, maybe from you know, maybe it endured a bit of a sandstorm lately or something and, uh, and really got scuffed up in the process revealing all this fresh metal. I'll try to stick to the raised areas as much as possible the bits that are exposed And then I lightened up the base a little bit with some highlights of just a, a cheap acrylic paint and ivory colour and uh, went around the whole thing here just to lighten up and highlight those uh, that texture on the base. And then applied a few spots of PVA glue and then added a few yellow grass tufts because it's a desert and dead grass you know. Right, guys there we have it two pieces of pretty interesting terrain like this is really easy to make and these things took next to no supplies it was literally just that and some paint yeah you got to cut them up a little bit might use a, a hacksaw or a, or a dremel tool for that but I mean they're pretty simple it's just a paint job and uh, it's ready to go terrain you could add more things to them you, know, you could add things like maybe um, maybe control panels on the side or something or some sort of uh, interesting internal lights flashing away and stuff but honestly I don't think you need to and they look pretty good as is uh, so as far as it being cheap and effective I mean definitely for both of those and totally doable um, absolutely, I think anyone can just buy a water gun and not only that, you could get a free water gun if you've got a one that's already broken, if you've got kids, a garage sale or a, or a car boot sale as we call them in the UK, uh, you know, you could find a really cheap and totally usable Nerf gun kind of thing or, or water gun and yeah, I mean, super easy to make. So I'm really happy with the way they turned out and these are going to go pretty well on my uh, desert terrain board. I do have a few more desert themed 
uh, pieces coming up in the future. So if you are interested in those, feel free to subscribe and, and you know, follow on my channel and hit the notification bell and stuff like that. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and comment and all that sort of stuff as well. And uh, I'll hopefully get back to you really soon with another video. I do have Instagram set up and I do have a Patreon set up as well. If you want to follow me on there, feel free to pledge a dollar on Patreon if you get a lot of use out of this channel. If not, then just feel free to watch the videos I post here on YouTube. And that's all for this one, I think. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting.